Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Schrader here. Uh, welcome back for another Affinity Photo tutorial um, from self-quarantine this time here. I'm self-isolating because I got my COVID test today. Uh, I'm going to try and hopefully get my results back tomorrow and then hopefully I can be back at school with you guys for oh, Wednesday at the earliest, Thursday at the latest, and we can actually finish up the block together, okay? Um, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about what a multiplicity is. Now, multiplicity is taking a bunch of different images of the same person and putting them together into the same scene, okay? So I've shown you guys examples. So for this one, uh, this is going to be interacting, which means that the characters overlap and interact with each other a little bit. Um, I have another tutorial that you guys will have the link to on how to do a non-interacting uh, multiplicity. And this one will kind of cover both because I need to do uh, one part interacting and one part non-interacting. So I'm going to take these three photos, this one here, this one here, and this one here, and I'm going to merge them together to create this image of the three of them together. Now the interaction here is minimal, but it is still interacting, okay? So what it is is this guy on the computer here, okay, handsome devil, is interacting because his sh shoulder and body are over top of this guy's arm on the couch. And right here, if we zoom in, we can see that the finger overlaps with the body just a little bit, but it's enough that I can show you the technique on how to do it. And then I can not wait to see what creative concepts you guys come up with with what cool photos you're will you can give me. So first thing we need to do is we need to open up Affinity Photo. I've got it loaded up here and we are going to go file and we're not going to open. We're not going to create a new document. We're going to create a new stack. Okay, and what a new stack is, is it takes the three images you've taken using your tripod, you set it up uh, with the manual settings, you adjust your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed so that you know that those settings are not going to change. And we know that the exposure triangle is really what we need to focus on to get a high quality image and have it the right exposure and the right brightness so that it's not too dark and it's not too bright and we can see a very well composed image okay so i've opened my new stack okay i'm just going to go through that one more time because i got sidetracked file new stack and then i'm going to add images okay now i'm going to select this one, this one, and this one here, and I'm going to click on the top one, I'm going to hold my shift key, and I'm going to select all three of them at the same time. So you click on the top one, hold your shift key, click, click on the bottom one, and then hit open, and it will add all three images at the same time, rather than going through and doing it all individually. And then you want to make sure you have automatically aligned images selected, and what that's going to do is it's going to take things in the background, it's going to take things in your foreground, and it's going to line those things up as best it can, and then it's going to merge them together to create uh, one stack that everything's kind of perfectly lined up in. Okay, So I'm going to hit OK now that I've got them. And you'll see right here that we get a group when it opens up. My affinity on this computer has been moving so slow, but I can't go into the school. I can't do it on the big screen. So you guys are going to have to bear with me with some lag here today. Okay. So it's opened up. We've got a live stack group right here. So if I click on that arrow right there, it's going to show me that I have all three images selected in that stack. Okay. Now we don't want that. So if I right click on my stack, and I'm going to go to ungroup. Okay, so it's going to ungroup and it's going to keep all those images aligned still, but it's going to separate them into different layers. And we notice that we're working with the layers category today and we're not working under the adjustment tab. We're going to be using the layers. Okay, now the first thing I always do when I'm working with multiple layers in Affinity Photo is I always, always rename them. It's just who I am. I need to be organized and you guys should get into that habit too because if you ever do graphic design or if you ever do anything that requires you working with multiple layers, if you're not organized, you're going to struggle. So I'm going to start with the guitar layer and I'm going to name it left because he's sitting on the left side of the frame. Okay. Now if I unclick this here, it makes it disappear. Okay. See how it gets rid of the image. Um, now I've got this layer here where the guy's sitting on the couch looking towards the guy on the computer. I'm going to make sure I name that right because he's sitting on the right side of the frame. And then obviously my last image is the guy on the computer. He's sitting in the middle. I'm going to go middle. Okay. So I'm going to click all those layers on. Now to start 
we notice that this guy on the guitar is not interacting with the guy in the computer. So what I'm going to show you quickly is how to do the non-interacting method, which is really easy, really straightforward. And we're going to make that merge with the right panel. Okay, so it's very important to have your layers organized. So I'm going to take the left layer, have it on top. I'm going to have my right side panel. And then finally, I'll show you guys how to cut out the middle guy and we'll put him in there in a different way than this. Okay, so the left side here, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to create a mask. So selecting my left side layer, I'm going to click on this little thing here. If you float over it, it shows you this is a mask layer. Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to click on mask and it's going to create this little pop down menu that gives me a mask. Okay, now notice if I select on the left side, it selects both of them. But if I click directly on the mask on the image, it's going to select just the mask and that's what we want to do for this step. Okay. The next step we need to do is we need to go to our paintbrush. Okay. So that's the paintbrush tool. Now that's hotkey B. Okay. So I can just press B and it'll bring it up or I can go to here. You guys might see either the color replacement blush or the pixel tool, but we want the paintbrush tool and we're going to be painting in pure black. So uh, some of your guys' color adjustments might be down here. It might be up here. I've managed to set mine up. So it's right there. So I'm going to select black and I'm going to select my mask, not the layer the mask only, and I'm going to start painting in this guy black. Now this is going to go slow, but you can see as I'm hovering over it, it's going to be real slow, is it starts to go see-through, okay? So as I paint black over this guy on the mask layer, he's going to start to disappear. And you guys are going to have to listen to me do some filler here, because as I start painting, you guys will notice that it is not keeping up with me at all. And I'm going to paint the table so I get his reflection, and I'm just going to make sure I cover every square pixel of this guy playing the guitar. Okay, now, like I said, you've got to bear with me because my affinity is moving slow and I'm not 100% sure why. Okay, so I'm just painting over and then I stop clicking and hopefully it doesn't take too long. It took a while the first time I tried to fill this video, um, so I needed to come up with some filler. Um, I really hope that you guys are all staying safe out there. Um, I am going to miss you guys the next couple of days. I really wanted to finish out the week strong. Um, but I got the sniffles on Friday afternoon when I finished up school and I was sick all day yesterday with a scratchy throat and a cough. So I had to go get that test done and it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it's not too, too bad. Okay. So as we wait for this to load, I'm just going to give you guys a little, uh, tour. Okay. So I finished up my Christmas decorating, uh, while I was sick yesterday. So we got these handmade pillows by my mama bear. Okay, love and joy, okay. The Christmas tree is all set up, all done up. We got all of our little Christmas decorations and knickknacks set out already. I got my partner in crime, Nelly. She's snoozing on the couch, waiting for this affinity photo tutorial to be over. She just got back from the dog park, so that's her favorite thing ever, and she's usually conked out for a couple hours by then. Um, yeah, so as we wait for this to go, um, I am going to give another video, I've posted one on uh, non-interacting multiplicities, I've posted one on a double exposure that shows you how to do the, the bust of the body, the chest up, I will do one more where we do a double exposure of um, a full body, which is part of the assignment, okay, um, while I'm gone, oh, doesn't matter what happens while I'm gone, uh, because the mask finally worked, okay, so I've got my mask done. And then the next step is I'm going to hold command or control, depending on what type of keyboard you have or computer, and I'm going to hit command, I'm going to hold it and hit I. And as we can see, ooh, la, la, that guy playing guitar shows up below on the right side layer where the guy sitting here is, okay? So that's step one. That's a non-interacting multiplicity. I could submit this if I wanted. It doesn't really make any sense. So I'm going to show you guys how to do the next part. I'm going to turn off my right side layer and I'm going to turn off my left side layer. And I'm only going to focus on my middle layer. So I'm making sure that my middle layer is selected. Okay. Now, if I hold Alt and go on my scroll wheel, I can zoom in. Okay. And what I want to do is I'm going to use the selection brush tool, which is right here, or a hotkey W. And basically, it just makes it so that I can automatically select all the way around this person. And I'm going to show you how to cut them out and put them on top. 
so that he sits in with these other two. Okay, so again, using the square brackets, I can make my brush bigger or smaller. And I always start out bigger because it's easier to select the stuff. And you see how it kind of automatically snaps to the edges of my lines, okay? So I'm going to go, I'm going to select the computer. I'm going to select the body, okay? I'm going to select the reflection off of the coffee table as well, okay? Now, you're going to notice that I've made the base of my selection done here, but I've got some of this picture up here I don't want. I've got some of the couch in here. Now, I made a big mistake when I shot this photo. I took a picture of me wearing a Navy shirt sitting on a Navy couch. That does not make it easy to do the automatic selection tool, but I'll show you how we get rid of it, okay? So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm gonna zoom in nice and close to the head here and I'm going to unselect this picture. So if I hold Alt and click and hold, now that's just getting rid of all that stuff that I don't wanna select. I want that little bit of the hat. So I'm just gonna release Alt and paste in there and then I'm going to come through and get rid of the rest of that selection, okay? We got this little bit of background there. We can have that. It's okay. We've got to make sure all of the ear is. And basically what I do, and I can click the scroll wheel on my mouse, and I can move around the canvas freely as I want. I want to go through and make sure I have everything selected that I want and everything I don't want selected I get rid of. So I'm going to hold Alt and get rid of that little bit of the couch. Okay. I'm going to keep going around the body here. And I'll show you guys how we clean up the arm hair. I'm going to get rid of that little bit make sure I've got the whole hand. Now I do want to make sure that if we can see there's a little reflection there, I want to make sure I get that. So I'm going to select part of the table. We've got the mouse reflecting off the table. We've got the cord reflecting off the table. So I'm going to make sure I've got some of the table selected. I'm going to start working my way up around the other side of the body here. And I've got these little bits of couch I want to get rid of. So I'm going to hold alt and I'm just going to brush over top of those right here and right there. Okay, working my way up, I've got this big section of couch I don't want, so I'm going to alt-click that and get rid of that. And maybe it looks like that shirt right there. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to show you guys how I get that little bit of beard in there, and we are pretty good. So I've got the majority of my selection finished, but there's one more step. Just one more. We're going to hit this refine button right here, okay? And then it's going to turn everything red that we didn't select okay so now what I want to do is I want to zoom in and I want to refine so I've got the matte selected and I'm gonna just make sure that I get all of this arm hair just by painting it in and we'll see what it does okay so you should be able to see if I zoom in close some of that red goes behind the arm hair okay I'm gonna do the same thing to my beard on the other side I want to paint that in red and we'll see how that selection works, okay? Now if we zoom in nice and close, we can see that red goes behind the beard hairs, okay? We could do that little bit of hat up there and see how that goes. Okay, that red goes in there. And we're all good here. And maybe we'll just do a little comb over of the arm on this side. Okay, and I think we are good to go. So I'm gonna hit apply on this here now. So we hit apply and we notice that we've got this selection all ramped up all the way around here. So my next step is I want to cut this guy out and I want to paste him. So I can do that two ways. I can go to select, uh, or not select, sorry. I can go to edit and I can go copy or I can just hit command C and then command V. Now if I turn off my middle layer, we have this nice cutout of just the guy sitting on the computer, okay? So, we're gonna keep this layer turned off and we're gonna drag our middle layer, this new one, so I'm gonna say middle cutout, and I'm gonna drag this to the very top of my image, okay, in the layers. Now, if we notice when we're dragging layers around, see how this red bar shows up right here? If I go off to the right, it kinda gets shorter, and that's going to merge it with the layer above, okay? I want to see that full red bar going all the way across the top, and it should be good to go from there. So now I'm going to turn my left layer on, 
and we can see that we got the guitar guy all cut out looking fancy okay and I'm gonna turn my right layer on and we've got our image fully merged together so now there's a little bit of a hiccup here okay we need to show us how to get this finger all set into spot and we need to show how to get rid of this stuff so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit escape and it's gonna get rid of my selection see how all those dotted lines went away now I want to use my eraser tool okay the eraser tool hotkey E okay and then not the background erase not the flood erase but the actual eraser tool so we can click that and change it and I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna clean up the shoulder here okay now notice oh I hit the wrong hockey. Notice that my hardness is set to about 37. I'm going to put that up to about 50% for this step. And this is just going to clean it up. And the same thing goes with this erase tool as anything. If I use the square brackets, right or left, right's going to make it bigger and left is going to make it smaller. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to slowly start to erase that little bit of shoulder that was sticking out too much from our selection. And I think there was a little bit here that was sticking up. So I'm just going to go through and slowly erase that. Now notice that I have my middle layer selected when I do this so that everything blends well together. Okay. Now, the next step is we want to be able to get this finger so it's not sitting below behind. We want to see it so it's sitting on top, similar to that. So I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to slowly erase out. Oh. But I erase too much. So if I hold Command Z or Edit Undo, okay, I can turn my opacity down on my middle layer, keeping it selected still, and I'm just going to erase out that little bit there and then turn my opacity back up. Now, still, I've erased a little bit too much, okay, so I'm going to Command Z, Command Z, and I'm going to erase just a little bit less and now turn my opacity back up and we can see that that finger is now overlapping okay so now I've got my multiplicity set up okay it looks pretty good so far but what I want to do is I want to merge all of these layers together so I'm going to click on the top layer the middle cutout I'm gonna hold shift and I'm going to click on the right layer the other layer I want to merge and I'm gonna group these together Okay, so now I've got a group, I've got my stack, and any editing I want to do after is going to actually affect the whole stack. So, the next thing I want to do is I want to use my blur brush, which is this teardrop right here. You might see these, one of these tools here, but I want to use the blur brush, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to just slowly go around the place where I cut out the middle image, okay? And it's just going to kind of blur it and blend it to the background. So I want my hardness on my brush down. Same thing goes with this. The brackets will make your brush bigger, which is a lot faster than going through here and scrolling on that. Okay, so what I want to do is use my brackets. Oh, we got some lag here. We just got to wait. Hopefully it's quick. Okay, I need to actually go up here and make this smaller. Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. Now it's not lagging on me anymore. Okay. So we want to take our blur brush and we're just going to comb it over there just around the shoulders and we're just going to brush it in right here. Now you're going to see a very faint blur and it should be very faint. But all it's going to do is just blend that cutout image into the background just a little bit more so it doesn't look like we've got such harsh cut jagged lines that the cutout tool does okay so looks good there gonna come up right here oh, we're lagging a little bit okay come up around there blur that in a little bit okay blur that in and like I said just faintly going over it one pass should do for pretty much everything and then if I zoom out we should have a finished up image. Now, if I want to do any adjustments, which I do, uh, this one I want to sharpen it up a little bit. We're going to give that a sharp a shot. I'm going to go to sharpen, okay, and I'm going to add an unsharpen mask, and I'm just going to see how it. Oh, too much. Do less, okay. I'm going to sharpen the image up a little bit. I want to take my factors down just a wee bit so it's not so harsh, and maybe put my threshold. No, we'll keep the threshold at zero. Now see how it just kind of sharpens that up. We're going to apply that. And then I can do any of my adjustments that I want to do, okay? 
Oh, wrong one. Okay, keeping the pixel layer selected now. See how it turns that group into a pixel layer after we do the sharpen. Now it's all flat. So now we can't do any more work to it. So make sure you've got it exactly where you want it before you start putting your masks or your adjustments in, okay? So now if I wanna do my levels, I can adjust my levels, okay? And remember, we wanna bring the blacks up just enough so it's touching that raised up line. We wanna bring our whites over just a hair to brighten it up. Now I'm a big fan of adjusting the gamma in it, okay? And I just wanna be a little bit lower and no, nope, we'll keep it at that, we'll keep it at that, okay? I can make the image a black and white if I wanted to. I can do any of these things now. But I'm very happy with how this turned out, okay? This one looks better than the first edit I did of this. So now I'm going to make sure I save it, okay? Uh, and because I've flattened it all already, all I need to do is export it. So file, export, okay? We hit export and we save it always as a PNG, okay? And I would name this Interacting Multiplicity Mr. Schrader, okay? And we are done like dinner, okay? So we hit save, and we should get a nice copy of that saved either on our desktop or in our Multiplicity folder, okay? Um, thank you guys for bearing with me through this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something, it's still exporting. But uh, if you have any questions over the next couple of days, please don't hesitate to email me. Okay, we can work something out. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Follow along with these tutorials, please. And just do it step by step. Pause the video as you go. Um, and you should have no issues getting this all figured out. But it's as simple as selecting your selection tool, your blur tool, and then it will show you how to select it all, cut it out, and um, paste it and then just make sure you blend it all nice together okay take care everybody be safe be smart we'll see you soon